Let's take an example of uh, logistic regression here. Distal outcome in latent class analysis. And we're going to look at odds ratios and their non-symmetric confidence intervals. So we have uh, five uh, latent class indicators and the latent class variable C and a covariate X that predicts the latent class probabilities but also predicts a distal outcome u so say that it's a binary variable so u is in the in this case regressed on two variables on x and on c one is observed the other is latent one is binary the other is nominal so let's see how we deal with that so on slide 18 we're going to look at odds and odds ratios with two predictors so the general case uh, we can work from logit regression. Logit is the same as log odds, as we will realize as time goes on here. The log odds for you, that's one way of writing the logit model. You just focus on the logit, which, as we said before, is a linear expression in the two axes. So the odds ratio interpretation is this namely the OR for x1, the effect of x1 is e to the power of b1 and that's irrespective of the value of x2 and the OR effect of x2 is e to the power of b2 irrespective of the value of x1 and that's a function of using the logistic regression uh, equation. Probit regression doesn't have this feature so that's very valuable that the effect of x1, the odds ratio for x1, that is the relationship between x1 and the dependent variable u, uh, is not dependent on the value of x2. So you can control for x2 and compute this effect of x1 separately. Latent class model, uh, if you look at that now, instead of um, having two observed x's, we have one op observed x and one latent x, namely c. Then you have logit regression with x and the latent class predictor c. So it's log odds for u conditional on x and c being in a certain class. So we then put a subscript for the intercept and uh, not a subscript for b in this case because uh, we're saying that there is no, we're saying that the intercept of u can vary as a function of c, but the slope of u on x does not vary as a function of c. We have no subscript c on b here because we don't have an interaction between x and c. You could have c have an arrow, broken arrow to the arrow from x to u, and that would say that the regression slope u on x could vary also with c, but not in this case. Now in M plus we talk about we don't talk about intercepts in logistic regression as much as thresholds. And thresholds, we we'll call that T here, is the negative of an intercept. It doesn't matter uh, if you work with the intercept or threshold, it's just a change of the sign. Now the odds ratio effect of X is e to the power of B, irrespective of the latent class, by virtue of using logistic regression, just like we talked about up here. Now the Odds ratio effect of the latent class variable C, the other predictor of U, is expressed in terms of the U odds for C equals 1, the first class, divided by the U odds for C equals C, the last class, just like we have talked about before, using the last class as a reference class. And again, it's not influenced by the value of X. So let's say here on slide 19, how would you express this in M plus if you uh, wanted to get into the technicalities of it? Let's look at that odds ratio effect for the latent class, that is the latent class effect on the distal outcome U. So we have the M plus script here, X equals poverty, and U being uh, begin at the begin item from the reading data at wave two, and the latent class indicators are the five binary reading indicators letter recognition and words in context from, from time one. 
So we have time one indicators and la corresponding latent class variable predicting a distal outcome at time two. So in the variable command, then we have the use variables as the poverty covariate and the latent class indicators, letter recognition, two words in context, and then the distal outcome. And we're saying that the indicators and the distal outcome are categorical. And as before, we're looking at three classes. We do a mixture type of analysis um, with a moderate number of starting values and processors equal to eight to make it go faster. And the model is, in the overall part, we regress C, latent, latent class variable on poverty, the X variable, and we regress, regress begin to on poverty as well. And putting this regression up here in the overall means that it is held equal across the different classes of C. So there's no interaction between C and poverty. And then in class one, we put in the distal outcome threshold, begin to threshold one, it's a binary variable, and label it T1. And then you have the latent class indicators, the thresholds of which you want to vary across class two and across class three. And, all, and in all three classes, you label the threshold for the distal outcome, T1, T2, T3. And then in the model constraint command, you define these new parameters, probabilities, odds, and odds ratio. And for instance, at the poverty level of zero, you compute the probability of being uh, having the, uh, the probability of uh, the outcome for class one, for class two, and for class three, corresponding uh, threshold values varying from T1 to T2 to T3. So that's the uh, probability of, of uh, getting the beginning, beginning item right at wave two for the three different classes. And the odds are then the ratio of the probabilities P1 divided by its complement, getting it wrong, one minus P1, and odds for two and odds for three. And we're interested in the relationship between the uh, classes of C and the binary outcome of begin two. So we're looking at then the uh, odds ratio of the ratio of odds being in the first class relative to the odds of being in the last class. So that's an odds ratio that tells us the relationship between the latent class variable and the distal outcome. And we want now, we have then the odds ratio computed that way. We have a non-symmetric confidence interval that we want for, for this odds ratio. And we use, base that on the estimate and the standard error of the log of the odds ratio, namely the log odds one uh, minus log odds three, because the log of a ratio is the difference between the two log odds. So the log of odds one divided by log of odds, divided by odds three is the log of odds one minus the log of odds three. And we know that the odds here for uh, the uh, or the log odds rather for, for each of the three categories is the threshold. It's only the threshold that influences that. Or rather the logit, so it's the minus the threshold. And the difference between that and the minus of the T3 comes out here. So the difference is minus T1 plus T3. And if you compute this for, uh, this was for poverty equals zero, if you do that for poverty equals one, you get the same diff 13, same odds ratio value, because the slope for B cancel out, cancels out. And that's how it should be, right? The uh, relationship between C and the distal outcome should not vary as a function of X that is the X values. That's what we agreed on. So there's a technical um, description of the details 
of these calculations and you of course get help by M plus in terms of doing this automatically in the output but here's what's going on and there may be situations where you have to do this which are sort of non-standard where you have to do this yourself in model constraint here you have a, a template to go by now we then want to continue here by saying that the we have want to have the non-symmetric confidence interval by exponentiating the confidence limits of the log loaded difference for the distal outcome. We said that the estimated odds ratio was minus, or rather the estimated difference, which is the loaded difference, is minus 0 0.948 with this standard error. And a symmetric 95% confidence interval for this loaded difference is therefore minus 9 point, 0.948 plus minus 1.96 times the standard error. So you get the confidence interval like this, which is for the loaded difference. Now, to get to the odds ratio confidence interval, well, first of all, the estimate is the uh, exponenti exponentiated value of the, the loaded difference. So that's uh, minus. 0 0.948 that's used in, in the e to the power of. The non-symmetric confidence interval is then computed by exponentiating the limits, the exponentiated lower limit of the logit difference and the upper limit. So the confidence limits will be these two values and we see then that that doesn't cover one and therefore the value 0 0.388 is considered significant. So the odds ratio that is the influence of the latent class variable on the distal binary distal outcome is significant. And in this case we're lucky that the M plus output shows these results automatically under the heading latent class indicator odds ratios for the latent class classes. So there you have it. And that's as technical as we will get here now in the section basic building blocks.